So we're back to keep working on the Spire pen. We are going to take this 3D printed plastic prototype and hopefully make at least the body here out of brass. Maybe the, the bolt or the button here as well. We'll see. But first up is the body. Last time I did a video, I made this uh, brass tip here. And that's worked pretty well. It's in my 3D printed prototype. And I'm excited to see what the whole thing looks like out of brass. So I have an end mill touched off in the pocket NC ready to go. First thing I'm going to do is use that end mill in the pocket NC to set the Z offset on my material. I've always struggled getting the stick out length on my material right on this machine. And I've seen people touch it off the edge of the end mill. And I'm excited to try that this time. So the first thing I'm going to do is move the table to A90 to get it oriented so that the part will be tip to tip with the tool. So G0, A90, enter. Okay. Now I'm gonna go to Z0. No, I'm not. I'm gonna go to X0 first. G0, X0. Okay, now that should be centered. Now I'm gonna go to Y0. There's Y0. All right, now we can go to Z0. Okay, well, let me go to Z0. I think because the sh tool's too short, and it may not know what tool's in here. So I'm going to give it a T22 M06 G43. Okay, now it knows it's on the right tool. G0, Z0. This still may or may not work. Okay. It won't go to, well, it won't go to Z0. Okay, that is the zero point on this machine. Uh, the zero point on these five axis machines is an imaginary point somewhere above the uh, B table and in the center of rotation on the A axis. My stick out needs to be 0 0.7, uh, no, 0.803. So I'm going to do a G0.803 and hit enter and it should move back. There we go. And that's where my stock needs to be. Now I can take my collet without chipping my end mill, stick that in and extend my stock until it touches. Of course. So the, end, the, the, the tube is hollow, so the end mill goes right into the middle of it. Can I get it back? Okay. I'm gonna touch, I'm gonna jog my X just a little bit. That was a lot more than a little bit. This is a brand new end mill too. You saw nothing. All right. Well, I need to rehome the machine and do that again. Well, I guess I can just rehome X. Okay, let's see if we can do this with a few screw or screw. Call it in, material in the back. Okay. Uh, this time I'm gonna put the call it nut doohickey in place, because I'm not sure, you guys probably got a better view than I did, but I think the call it slipped forwards just a little bit, which is why it caught on the end mill. So if we put this in place, that can't happen. Now we can go to our stick out point. Okay, and that's how far it needs to stick out. This time I made sure that I put the tool off center and now I can tighten down the fixture. And we should be at the right stick out this time or I'm gonna break a tool, or both, or neither. Okay, we're in. Check out this cool uh, cover for the B table. That came from a guy on Instagram named Ed Kramer. He's one of the key Insta machinists in the Pocket NC community. Uh, he hasn't been using it as much lately because he got spoiled with a fancy machine, but he's done a lot of work on the Pocket NC and really has been a big part of educating the Insta Machinist community on the Pocket NC. It's how I know about it. It's why I have one now. And he's definitely taught me a lot about the machine. 
He did share this file on Thingiverse for this uh, plastic cover. <laughs> I was getting some chatter, so I just slowed it down. I'm getting worse chatter. That's maybe not great, but it's better. I wonder if it's recutting chips. Here, I'm gonna turn on my blower. Well, that wasn't too bad. There is something that worries me though, and I'm hoping it'll show up on the microscope here. The hole is off axis and I noticed this last time when I was working on the pen tip and that's going to be a major problem. I think it's the fixture. I've heard stories that these call it fixtures aren't always right on axis. I think it should be good enough for the prototype. It's something I can work around and in the future I will machine my own fixture in place so that the machine will know exactly where that zero is. Because right now I don't have any way of dialing in exactly how that call it fixture is, is located. But if I machine it in place, then the machine will know exactly where it is and will know exactly where the axis is. And we can reduce that run out like, significantly. Let's see if you can see it on the microscope. Well, you can see the tool marks on the inside there. That's where we were getting that chatter. And I think it looks better deeper inside where I slowed it down. Definitely a recipe to improve upon. There you go. You can see how the bottom edge there, like right here, is much thicker than the other edge right there. I don't know. Not perfect, but that'll work for now. So now it's time to flip it, and we're going to come in with a 1 16th inch end mill and cut out the um, slot for the mechanism. This pen is almost a bolt action pen. If the design works how I intend it right now, it'll actually be a clicky pen. It'll have a push button on the top. But the way I'm doing the mechanism is it'll work fairly similar to a bolt action pen where there will be a, pe a uh, pin that slides internally on a track or the slot here I'm about to do. And pushing on the top of the pen will engage a bolt which slides in the track and it'll lock in place. And then you'll twist the cap with your thumb or the, the, you'll twist the button on the top with your thumb and that'll disengage the, the bolt. Well, that's the idea. I'm not 100% convinced it'll work yet. So I'm just going to put this material back in and reset my zero the same way I did before. I screwed up. I was supposed to thread mill before I took it out. I got ahead of myself. This far it's been super easy. So I'm just going to cut myself a new piece of stock and rerun everything off camera and I'll meet you back here with you sitting on the table on a tripod and I'll have a new piece of stock ready to go. All right, we're back to where we should have been, and now it is thread mill time. Again, these are 5 16 48 threads. Uh, they are incredibly fine, and remember we had some problems last time? Uh, so I'm not entirely, oh, I should check my settings before I cut. Uh, so I'm not entirely sure that these will cut right. But it doesn't hurt to try, unless we break our end mill, or our thread mill. I only have one, so that would hurt. So it could hurt to try, but hopefully it won't. OD thread milling is much more exciting. All right, that was easy and those look like threads. So let's take my prototype apart here and see if it works. 
Will it thread? No. I... So looking down in there, I don't see a start of a thread, which I think means that maybe my first bore wasn't deep enough or my thread mill didn't come far enough up. So let's try and get a look down in there with the microscope and see if we can see anything. Do you see where the thread starts? I don't see where the thread starts. Um, and the good news side of things, when I re-ran this, whether by chance or by chance, uh, it's more centered. Let's run out on this one. Don't know why. Probably just got lucky with how I mounted the call at this time. Um, all right, so let's rerun it and we're going to thread higher up. Double blind threads. Who knew? All right, same thing, except this time it's going to thread like a mile and a half above the top of the hole. I feel like it's trying really hard to cross thread for some reason. I wonder if it's this little locating shoulder, if there's not enough clearance and it is interfering there, which is keeping it from going in. I could try knocking that shoulder down a little bit. I'm going to try to just manually buzz this on the lathe and see if I can see if it's that locating shoulder that's too big. I guess I could measure it. But remember last time I had that super worn out end mill, it is possible that the locating shoulder here is oversized. I guess the inside diameter could be undersized, but I don't have a, as accurate of a way to measure that. I'm using my mics here. I guess we can try to mic the inside diameter here. Okay, that's right on size. This um, is maybe a little bit oversized, but there should be like two thou of clearance. I'm still gonna hit this on the lathe really quick. Okay, so I just learned that was really, really, really out of round. But um, I took off a bunch of material and hopefully it fits now. What if I use force? Using force has never screwed up a part. I'll put a finish on here that hides all this damage. Okay, it's ugly, but together. All right, now it's actually the right time to flip it and do the bolt slot on the back. So that works pretty well. It's nice and flat on the top now. The next step is a 1 16th inch end mill and it's gonna do this really cool five axis cut that's almost certainly gonna break my end mill. But if it doesn't break my end mill, it'll be super cool. This is a 1 16th Lakeshore Carbide two flute 1 16th inch end mill. My machine tends to do well with these 1 16th inch end mills. I think they are big enough that with my uh, spindle speed I can get enough surface speed, but they are small enough that the lack of rigidity in my small machine doesn't matter. There's so little tool pressure that it doesn't deflect it, and I can run it as if I was a big machine, but on the pocket NC, which is a little machine.
I can't believe that worked first try. Uh, that was a super cool toolpath. That was a swarf. So again, this isn't really a bolt action pen. It's gonna be button. So the, the slot here is a different shape. The pin will ride inside that groove. And when it's pressed down, it'll ride over. And then when you release it, it'll catch on that little, that little divot there. And then when you twist it, you'll just kind of have to get over that little detent and then it'll pop up and your pen will retract. So that's the idea. Uh, you can see where I did dumb things there and marred it up, but I'll sandblast it and hide those sins. Huh? I'm very happy with that. Well, my 3D printed button doesn't quite fit like it's supposed to. Uh, this may have been an older revision, or maybe I cut my tube too short, or maybe the tolerances aren't there from the 3D printed part, or all of the above. Uh, but there's a preview of what it's going to look like. Now, it will get a pen clip coming off here that will hide this little, um, the slot, the button slot. And when it's all the way in the down position, there will be a slight gap, and then it will be up something like this when it's in the unclipped position. We may change the shape of the button here if it looks silly with the kind of long stem that it might end up with. But this is a good, uh, this is a good start. So thank you guys for watching along this far in the video. If you want to see real-time updates, you can go check out my Instagram. I, we are at design the everything there. I'll probably do a post where I finish this. But in the meantime, thank you guys for watching.